Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, oh Ramadan. Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers. And today, we're discussing the topic Qadr fasts, Fidya, and Kafara fasts. Dr. Zakir, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakir, the first question I'd like to level at you regarding the topic is could you explain uh, what is the meaning of Qadr fast? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmain. Amma abad. A'uzu billahi minish shaytanir rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shuhri sadri. Wa yisilli amri. Wa halul ugdatu min laysan yafqahu kawli. The word qada means to fulfill or compensate fasts which were due and they could not be executed. Means if there is a fard fast which you could not keep for some valid reason, then it has to be compensated or fulfilled later on. If there is a valid excuse that you could not keep a fast during Ramadan, whether it be the person was traveling or you were sick or a lady was menstruating, etc., then the fast has to be made up later on after the month of Ramadan. Or if a person breaks the fast for a valid reason, whether he was sick or if he was traveling, or some lady was menstruating, etc., then the fast has to be made up immediately after Ramadan as soon as possible. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, fasting was prescribed for a fixed period, but if any of you is ill or on a journey, then it should be made up later in the other days. Means if you could not fast for a valid reason, then you should make up the fast later on. For example, if suppose someone is sick or is traveling for the full month, then the full month should be made later on. If the month of Ramadan was for 29 days, then the person should fast for 29 days later on. If the month of Ramadan was for 30 days, then the person should fast for 30 days. And besides the fast of Ramadan, if it was obligatory fast that a person says that if he has vowed that he'll fast on so-and-so day. If such and such a thing is fulfilled, then he's supposed to fast. And if you could not fast for a valid reason, even that should be made up later on, and even that is called as a Qadha fast. Okay, thank you very much for the first answer. Jazakallah khair. Now, is it incumbent upon a Muslim who is fasting in the month of Ramadan, who misses some of the fasts in Ramadan, um, to immediately make up those fasts after Ramadan? It is not compulsory that if a person misses any fast in Ramadan, he should make it up immediately. He can make it up any time before the next Ramadan comes. If suppose he has missed 10 fasts in the month of Ramadan, then it becomes obligatory as a last resort that if 10 days are left for Ramadan, then become fard. That is, you start making up the fast. So the general ruling is that the person can make up any time before the next Ramadan starts. But it's always preferable that it should be made up as early as possible because the person does not know how long will he live. Maybe he can die, etc. And the hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1950, where Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she says that she sometimes missed some days of fasting during the month of Ramadan 
and she could not make up the fast except in the month of Shaban. And the narrator adds that because she was serving the Prophet. So from this hadith we come to know that there is no time limit. It should be made as early as possible, but the latest is before the next Ramadan. And as far as possible, a person should not delay making the fast. He should make up the fast as early as possible. That is the best. But the maximum we can do, the latest is before the next Ramadan. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse 133, that they are quick in the race for asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking forgiveness from thy Lord, and for paradise, whose width is as much as the heavens and the earth, which has been prepared for the muttaqeen, which has been prepared for those who are righteous. Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 61. It is these who hasten every good work, and they are the ones who are the most foremost. So based on these ads, it's best that you should do your qada fast as early as possible so that there is nothing which is due on you. Okay. Jazakallah khair once again, Dr. Zakir, for the answer. Next question relates to a um, person who is making up an obligatory fast, perhaps after the month of Ramadan. What is the ruling if a person breaks a fast while making up for an obligatory fast? When a person is making up for the obligatory fast he has missed when doing the Qada fast, and if he breaks that fast, it is the same ruling as when a person is fasting during the month of Ramadan. It is the same ruling. And if a person breaks the fast while making an obligatory fast, if it's a valid reason, for example, he gets sick, or if he's traveling, or if a lady has menstruation, then that person should make up the fast as soon as possible before the next Ramadan comes. And if a person breaks the fast while making up for the missed fast, without a valid reason, then he should seek for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And he should repent and again make up the fast as early as possible before the next Ramadan. Dr. Zakir, is the heir obliged to make up the fast of the one who dies before he makes up his obligatory fast? And secondly, is a person allowed to fast for a person who's alive but is unable to fast due to some legitimate reason, maybe like sickness or such like? All the scholars agree that if a person is alive, for example, and if he does not offer salah, no one else can offer on his behalf. Similarly, if a person misses any fast for any valid reason, he may be sick, or for example, he's continuously sick or he's very old, so no one else can keep the fast on his behalf. As the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 184, that if a person finds it difficult to keep the fast, then he should feed a poor person. He should feed an indigent person. So here, if a person is alive and if he cannot keep for a valid reason, like continuous sickness or old age, old man, old woman, then one person should be fed for every fast he or she misses. This is the ruling. As far as the first question is concerned, that if a person dies before you could make up for the fast that you're supposed to keep. So what is the ruling? Should the heir, should they fast on his behalf once he dies? As far as this ruling is concerned, there are two groups of scholars and the two opinions for it. As far as the ruling is concerned for this case, there are two opinions. One group of scholars, they say that the heir or the guardian, they should keep the fast of a person who has died and who ought to have fasted. Based on the hadith of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting. Hadith number 1952, Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She says that a person who has died, who ought to have fasted, then his guardians should fast on his behalf. So based on this hadith, the first group of followers, they say that the guardian or the heir, they should make up for the fast when a person dies, 
who ought to have fasted. But there's another group of scholars who say that that's not required. But a person should be fed on his behalf. Based on the hadith again of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be with her, which is there in Muhalla ibn Hazm, volume 4, page number 422, where Amra, may Allah be with her, she asked Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be with her, that her mother had missed some of the fast during the month of Ramadan. So she asked Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be with her, that can she fast on behalf of her mother? So Hazrat Aisha Malawi Pidita said that no, she should not fast on behalf of her mother, but she should give charity. Equivalent to one sa that feeds a person for every fast that she has missed. So since both these two hadith contradict, the second group of scholars, what they say, the second opinion is that he had specifically mentioned that the fast that were missed were the fast of Ramadan. Whereas the first hadith of Sai Bukhari, volume number three, hadith number 1952, it's a general hadith saying that a person who died who ought to have fasted. So that's a general hadith. But this hadith is a specific hadith which says that these were the fast that were missed due to Ramadan. And here the ruling is, according to Ayesha Malai that the fast should not be made up, but one indigent person, one poor person should be fed. So since both the hadith cannot contradict, and both the hadiths are say, so the scholars, they say that if a person misses the fast of Ramadan, then the fasting need not be made up, but the right ruling is that one person should be fed who's poor. The other general hadith, they say, it indicates for a person who has vowed to fast. So if a person vows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he or she will fast if certain wish is fulfilled, at that time, it's obligatory that the heir of the person who has died should make up the fast. And further, a similar thing is mentioned by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. It's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2395. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. He says that if a person dies who has missed his fast in Ramadan, then you should feed one poor person for every fast that he has missed. And you need not make up for the fast. There is no atonement for fast. But if a person has vowed to fast, if he has vowed that he will fast if some wish is fulfilled, then in that case, there is atonement of the fast and that fast will be fulfilled by the heir or by the guardian. So based on these two hadith, because they do not contradict, that is the reason the opinion is divided that if it's the fast of Ramadan which is missed, then the right ruling is that one person should be fed for every fast missed. Further, there's one more hadith in Sayy Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1953, where it says, him. he says that a person came to the Prophet and asked him that, his mother had to make up for one month of fasting. So should he fast on her behalf? So the Prophet said, yes, he gave the answer in the affirmative. And it's good to make up the fast. But since again, this is the general hadith, it's not specifically mentioning whether it is the fast of Ramadan which is missed or whether it's the fast of vowing. And since we cannot agree that the Sahih hadith can contradict, so the best is the opinion, second opinion, that if a person misses any fast in the month of Ramadan, then one poor person should be fed on his behalf. But if a person vows and does not fulfill the fast, in this case, the fast should be made up by the heir. Okay, shukran. Dr. Zakia, if a person is fasting during the month of Ramadan and unfortunately he passes away, he dies, um, the person who takes charge of his affairs after his death is that person obliged to make up the fast that he's missed during the month of Ramadan? As far as a person, when he dies, once he dies, then all his actions, they cease to exist. As Hadith of a Prophet Muhammad it's mentioned in Sayyid Muslim, volume number three, in the book of Wasiyah, Hadith number 4005, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, 
that once a person dies, only thing that will continue amongst all his deeds is the recurring charity he has made or the knowledge that he has spread, that he has used to benefit the people. And the third is his son praying for him. So besides these three things, everything else ceases. So but naturally when a person dies, and if he had fasted maybe for 10 days of Ramadan, he dies on the 10th day, that doesn't mean that the balance 20 days somebody should make up for his fast. Once he dies, then he doesn't have to offer salah, he doesn't have to fast, everything ceases to exist, except the three things which I mentioned. So the person who is in charge of his affairs, he need not worry at all. Once he dies, everything ceases to exist, except the three things which I mentioned. Well, it's a very succinct answer. Dr. Zakia, suppose a person dies and that person who has died has made an obligatory vow to fast. Can the same number of people as the number of days that he's vowed to fast make up for those fasts? As far as a person who has died and who had vowed that he will make maybe X number of fasts, he has vowed maybe about, say that if he has said that he will fast for 30 days, he has made a vow. And if he dies without fulfilling that vow, then in this case, can one person fast for 30 days or can 30 people make up for the fast on one day? The reply is given in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, book of fasting, chapter number 42, where Hassan Malawi praises him said, that if 30 people gather together and if they fast together on one day, that could even make up for the fast that the person who has died has vowed for 30 days. So either one person fasts for the number of days he has vowed or that number of people, as many as the days vowed, come together and fast, both are permissible. Okay, that's comforting to know, alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakia. In the case of a woman who's on her menses, going through her period, menstrual cycle, can she fast these first six days of shawal before she makes up the fasts which she missed due to the period in Ramadan? As far as a lady who has undergone menstrual cycle and she misses maybe six fasts in the month of Ramadan, she has both the options. She can either make up the fast of Ramadan first and then fast the fast of Shawwal or she can first do the sixth fast of Shawwal and then make up for the fast that she has missed. But as far as permissibility is concerned, both are permissible. But the better would be that first she makes up for the fast she has missed in the month of Ramadan because that's an obligatory fast. The fast of Shawwal is a voluntary fast. First she should make up for the fast that's better and then she should fast the fast of Shawwal so that she would be able to fulfill the benefits as a beloved Prophet Muhammad said. It's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2614, that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan and then follows it up with six fast in the month of Shawwal, it's as though he has fasted for the full year or he has fasted perpetually for the full life. So better of the two is that she first makes up the fast for Ramadan and then later on she fasts the six days of Shawwal so that she gets the full benefit, she gets the full sawab, she gets the full reward as though she has fasted for the full year or she has fasted for the full life. But if she wants to first keep the fast of Shawwal and then make up for the fast of Ramadan maybe after a couple of months, even that's permissible. But the better is the first one. Or she has one more option that she can do the niya of making up for the fast which she didn't keep in the month of Ramadan and even together with that do the niya of Shawwal so it's two in one and inshallah Allah will reward her for both together. Jazakallah khair for the answer doctor. Dr. Zakir, does one who is making up Qadda fasts have to make them up consecutively or at random? For a person who has missed his fast in Ramadan while he's making up his Qadda fast there are two rulings there are two groups of scholars. One group of scholars say that it should be consecutively. It is based on a hadith which is present in al bahaki as well as Dar al-Qatni, which says that if a person 
who has missed the fast in Ramadan, he has to make up the fast consecutively. But this hadith is a daif hadith. It's a weak hadith. There is another hadith which is present in Da Akatni, which says that a person who's making up for the qada fast, he can either make it consecutively or he can make it separately the way he pleases. So the right ruling is that both options are available. He can do it the way he wants. Because the Quranic verse says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 184, that if a person is sick, if he will, or if he's on a journey, he should make up the fast later from the other days. Once Ramadan is over, he can fast any other day. And the same message repeated in the next verse in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 185, that it says that you have prescribed to fast in the month of Ramadan. But if anyone who is ill or on a journey, he has to make up the prescribed periods from the other days. So based on this, the right ruling is that the Qada fast can be kept anyway, whether consecutively or it can be kept separately, the choice is his. There is no one particular hadith which is authentic in which the Prophet said how the Qada fast should be kept or it describes how the Prophet kept. But there are other hadith which speak about the call of the Sahabas. There's a call of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be with him, in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, chapter number 40. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be with him, said that a person who has missed the fast in Ramadan, he can fast separately if he pleases. There is another call in Dar al Qatni of Abu Huraira, may Allah be with him. He said that if a person wants to make up for the fast he has missed in the month of Ramadan, he can fast consecutively if he pleases. So the right ruling is that the Qada fast can be made together if a person pleases. If he missed 15 fasts, he can fast 15 fasts together. Or he can fast at random, one fast a week, one fast a month, or once a fortnight. The choice is his. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Jazakallah. Okay. Could you explain for the benefit of the viewers, what is fidya and on whom is it obligatory? The word fidya means the compensation for a fast which could not be kept due to some permanent disability or some disease as the Quran mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 184, that if it's difficult for a person to fast, then he can feed one indigent person, one poor person. So if a person who has permanent disability, is permanently sick, or he's very old and can't fast, then he should feed one poor person for every fast he has missed, and this is called as fidya. Okay. Dr. Zakia, is it permissible for one who is unable to fast to feed one person for 30 days, or 30 people in one day? As far as fidya for a person who can't fast or is unable to fast, the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 184, that if a person finds it difficult to keep the fast or finds fasting with hardship, then he can either fast or he can feed one indigent person for every fast that he has missed. So if a person who misses the full month of Ramadan, for example, and if he has to give fidya, he has both the options open. He either calls 30 people and feeds them together, so that compensates or gives fidya for all the 30 days that the person has missed, or he can even give one person fidya for 30 days. And each person should be given one sa of the staple food of that state or of that country. One sa is equal to one and a half kilograms approximately. And both rulings are there, as it's mentioned in the ruling of Ibn Abbas in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 6, hadith number 4505. In the commentary of this verse of the Quran, Surah Bakhara, chapter 2, verse 184, it says that those people who find it difficult to fulfill the fast, to complete the fast, they can either complete it or feed one indigent person. And it says that these type of people described are very old men and women, or those people who have permanent disability or they have a disease which makes them difficult to fast. And both types of fast, as 
is given in the hadith of one of the sahabas by the name of Anas bin Malik. May life be with him. When he was old, the hadith says that he cooked some food and called 30 people and fed them together. The full food there for the full month of Ramadan. So here it shows that you can either give cooked food, cook food for them and feed them well, whether it be breakfast, whether it be dinner, whatever it is. Or the other option is, as is also agreed upon by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Shafi, as well as some of the Malikis, that you can also give uncooked food to one person for 30 days. One person only give him uncooked food for 30 days, so that that compensates or give the feed there for the full month. This is also agreed. So the choice is also either feed one person for 30 days or 30 people for one day. Okay. Both is permissible. Fine. Thank you. Mr. Zakia, could you explain the term kafara? And furthermore, could you also let our viewers know what is the expiation for a person who has sexual intercourse whilst fasting during the month of Ramadan? The word kafara is derived from the word kufr, which means to conceal, which means to hide, which means to cover. And in context of fasting, kafara for fasting is done when a person willfully breaks the fast by having a sexual intercourse. When a man has sexual intercourse with his wife while fasting, while keeping a fard fast, that's fasting in the month of Ramadan, then there should be kafara. As far as what is the kafara, it's mentioned clearly in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1936, where a person comes to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says that, O Messenger of Allah, I am ruined. I am ruined. Prophet asks, what happened? So he says that I had sexual intercourse with my wife while I was fasting. He approached the Prophet and said, I had sexual intercourse with my wife while I was fasting. So the Prophet asked him that, can you manumit a slave? Can you free a slave? So he said, no. Then the Prophet asked him that, can you fast for two consecutive months? Can you fast for 60 days together? So he said, no. Then the Prophet asked him that, can you feed 60 poor people? The man replies, no. So then a person comes and gives a basket of date to the Prophet. The Prophet hands this over to the man and says that give this to the poor people and that will be a kafara. So the man asks that should I give to a person who is poorer than my family? The Prophet says yes. So then the person says, I vow by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't know of any family which is poorer than my family between the two hills and mountains of Medina. So the Prophet's smile is still is more a scene and he says, give it to your family. So from this hadith we come to know that once a person breaks the fast, purposely by having a sexual intercourse with his wife, the first thing he should do is that he should compensate the fast as early as possible, but naturally before the next Ramadan. Number two, he should give kafara. So from the hadith you come to know that there are three options given. Number one is he should free a slave. Or number two, he can fast consecutively for 60 days. Continuously he should fast for 60 days together without any break. Or he should feed 60 poor people. And most of the scholars agree that it is not he can choose any one of the three. Some scholars say yes, he can choose any one of the three. But the real ruling is, he should try and do the first one, he should free a slave. If he cannot free a slave, then he should fast for two months consecutively, continuously. If he cannot do that, then the option is that he can feed 60 people. So this is as far as the kafir is concerned. Jazakallah khair for that hadith you've cited there from the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. In order to answer that, very good. Does a person have to offer expiation for having sexual intercourse whilst he's uh, doing a voluntary fast? As far as voluntary fasts are concerned, there is no expiation if a person has sexual intercourse. The kafara that is there is only when a sexual intercourse is done during a fard fast, during the fast of Ramadan. That's the time it's fard. 
There's a hadith which is mentioned in Sunnah Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2450, which is narrated by Umm Hani, may Allah be pleased with her. She says that the Prophet gave water to drink during the conquest of Makkah. Water was brought to the Prophet. The Prophet gives the water to drink. She drinks the water and she says that I have broken my fast. I was fasting. So the Prophet asks her, so was the fast for some atonement? She says no. So the Prophet says, then there's no problem. If it's a voluntary fast, then there's no problem. So here we come to know that the sin is only there if you break a farad fast. Because for voluntary fast, it depends upon the person who can break the fast. He can even eat when he wants and break the fast. As we quoted several hadith earlier, that one of the persons calls a sahaba to have food at his house. And the sahaba says that I'm fasting. Prophet says that he has made food for you. He spent money. So break your fast. We call it a voluntary fast. So voluntary fast can be broken. There is no sin at all. So in the same way, if a person has sexual intercourse with his wife during a voluntary fast, then it's not a sin because it's a voluntary fast. And he need not make up for the fast. If he wants to make up, he can make up. But neither is there any kafara. Again, there's a hadith in Sunan Nisai, Book of Fasting, Hadith number 2323. Once the Prophet gets up in the morning and he asks for food from his wife, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be her. She says there's no food. So the Prophet says, then I'm fasting. Again, for voluntary fast, the niyah need not be made the night before. It can even be made afterwards, as long as the person did not have any food after dawn. So based on this, there's no kafara if a person has sexual intercourse during a fast which is voluntary. Jazakallah khair. Last question for you today, Dr. Zahir, in this interview phase. Obviously, we'll be answering questions from the viewers later on, inshallah. In the case of a person who delays making up missed fasts, is there any expiation to be paid at all by that person? The right ruling is that if a person misses any fast in the month of Ramadan, he should make it up as soon as possible. Latest by next Ramadan. If he does not make up for the fast before the next Ramadan, then it's a sin. In this case, you should ask for forgiveness and you should make it up as soon as possible. As far as expiation is concerned, the different opinions, some scholars say that because he delayed, he should give some expiation and feed one poor person for every fast he has missed. But there is no proof in the authentic hadith that expiation should be given. Because the Quran is very clear in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, that if a person is ill or on a journey, he should make up the fast later on from the other days. There's no expiation mentioned here. So the right ruling is that if he has delayed too long, he should make it up as soon as possible, offer the qada fast, but there's no expiation. And this is the ruling of most of the scholars, including Sheikh Salman Auda, he says that, you know, it is, he should make up the fast as soon as possible, but there's no proof for expiation, but he should ask for forgiveness for having delayed to make up the fast. Zakhallah khair, Dr. Zakia. And now it's time to move on to the questions from the viewers. The first question I'd like to pose to you, Dr. Zakia, is from one of the viewers, of course. How does fasting act as an expiation for sins? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very merciful and he has made fasting as expiation for various of our sins. And there are various verses in the Quran which give us examples where it can be used. And depending upon different sins, the days that you have to fast, it keeps on differing. For example, Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 95, that fasting can be used as expiation when you hunt a game during the sacred precincts or in the state of Ihram, when you're doing Umrah or Hajj. And if you hunt a game, then fasting can be one of the ways in expiation of your sins. Further, it's mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 196, that if a person shaves his head when he's in Ihram, either doing Umrah or Hajj, because of certain diseases, which is not allowed to, then he can fast as an expiation. Again, it's mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 196, that when a person performs Hajj, he has to sacrifice an animal. 
but he does not have the means to do it. Instead of that, as an expiation, he can fast. Further, it's mentioned in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 89, that fasting can be used as an expiation if you break a vow. If you have taken an oath and if you violate it, then fasting can be used as expiation. It's also mentioned in Surah Mujadila, chapter number 58, verse number 3 and 4, that if a person, if a man, divorces his wife by zihar, it was the old practice in the olden days with Arabs, that if a husband calls his wife that you're like the backside of my mother, it's called a zihar, it's a way of divorce. So as an expiation, even that time, fasting is an expiation of sin, fasting two consecutive months. It differs in different sins over different expiations. And one more example I'd like to give you, just for the benefit of the viewers, it's mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 92, that if a person accidentally kills a believer, or if he kills a person with whom you had a treaty, then fasting can be used as an expiation for this also. Jazakallah khair for the answer. Next question from uh, one of our viewers. If a person is unsure about how many fasts he has broken or missed, how should he calculate the number of fasts that he has to make up? If a person doesn't know how many fasts he has missed or can't remember or can't recollect, then he should make a rough estimate, but he should not underestimate it. He should make a rough calculation and fast. If he overestimates by a little, it's not a problem. Neither should he overestimate too much because he should not overburden himself. So he should make a rough calculation to the best of his memory, to the best of his understanding. A little bit overestimate, no problem, but not too much, and neither should he underestimate it. And he should complete that fast. But there are some three points to be noted. Number one is he should repent for it. What he missed, or he could not fast, he should repent for it. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31. He says that, oh, those who believe, they turn to their Lord in forgiveness so that they may attain bliss, so that they may go to Jannah. Again, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 286, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lay a burden on a person greater than he can bear. So a person should repent and should make up the fast as soon as possible, which whatever understanding he has of the number of fasts he has missed. And Allah says in Surah Taqabun, chapter number 64, verse number 16, that fear Allah as much as you can, listen and obey. So a person should keep the fast, make up the fast as soon as possible. Preferably as soon as possible, but naturally before the next Ramadan comes. And the third point is that though it's not a must, some scholars think that if he has missed it and too much delayed, etc., he should even give expiation that is feeding one poor person for every fast he has missed. Though most of the scholars agree that it's not a must, but if a person can do, if he can give, then it's preferable. But it's not a must. Next question. A sick sister could not fast in Ramadan and she could also not find a poor person to feed. Should she give money in charity? If so, how much does she have to give in its place? As it's clearly mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 184, that if a person can fast with hardship, he can either fast or he has to feed a person indigent, feed a poor person for every fast he has missed. So if the sister was sick and she could not fast or she cannot make up for the fast because she is sick, and according to the commentary of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be with him, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, number 3, hadith number 4505. Commentary of this verse of the Quran, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 184, he says that this verse is not abrogated, but it refers to those people, old women and old men, who cannot make up for the fast, or a person who is continuously sick, like the sister. As far as feeding indigent, that's what the Quran says. But you cannot give charity to any poor person. You have to give food. That is one sa for one person. It is equal to one and a half kilograms. And as the sister said that she cannot find a poor person where she lives, I feel it's difficult. 
Fine, some Muslim countries have got more poor people, some have got less. But to say that she cannot find a single poor person to feed, that is difficult. I don't know of any country where you will not find a single poor person. Fine, some countries have less poor people, some countries have more poor people. But to say that she can't find is difficult. But surely, she cannot give money in charity. How much money will she give? The Quran says you have to feed one poor person for every fast mist. What she can do, she can appoint some person to find the poor person or appoint an organization to find, but mm -hmm. she will see to it that she will feed, give food, that's one sa for every fast she has missed. There are many charities in every country representing the Muslims, I'm sure she can find. I think you're absolutely right. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir. Next question for you, Dr. Zakir. I read that it is permissible for pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers not to fast and that they could feed the poor and do not have to make up their missed days. How true is that? As far as for a lady who's pregnant or who's breastfeeding, how should she make up for a fast? The views are divided. There are two groups of scholars. One group of scholars, they say that she need not make up for the fast. Only thing she has to give is the feeding of one poor person for every fast she has missed, based on the verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 184, that if you find it difficult to fast, then feed one indigent person. And according to the hadith of Ibn Abbas, it's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number 2, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2311. And Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, he gives commentary of this verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 184. He says this is meant for people who are very old, old man or old woman or people who are continuously sick and there's no chance of them to become healthy. And he also adds that this refers to breastfeeding mothers and pregnant women. But according to Sheikh Albani, the hadith is daif. It's a weak hadith. But there is another hadith which is there in Dar Qutni where Ibn Abbas may be with him. He says to a concubine that because you're pregnant, you need not keep the fast again. You only have to give fidya, that is feed one poor person for every fast you have missed. Talking to a concubine who had missed a fast. So based on this, this group of scholars say that you need not make up for the fast. You only give fidya, feed one indigent poor person for every fast you have missed. But the other group of scholars, what they say, that this verse of the Quran, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 184, does not fall in the category of breastfeeding women and pregnant women. Rather, the next verse, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 185, which says that fast in the month of Ramadan, but if any of you is sick or on a journey, then you should make up the fast later on. So what this group of scholars say, which is also the call of Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, that a breastfeeding woman and a pregnant woman fall in this category. They fall in the category of a person who's sick. You know, it may be, if she fasts, it may be dangerous for her life. Or if she fasts, it may be dangerous for the life of the baby. So they say the breastfeeding woman and the pregnant woman are more closer to the people who are sick. Therefore, they have to make up the fast. Because the verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 185 says that fast in the month of Ramadan. But if you're ill or if you're on a journey, you have to make up for the fast later on from the other days. So this is a more correct ruling. However, there's another third group of people, what they say, that if she has to fast because her life is in danger, then she has to make up for the fast later on from the other days. But if she has broken the fast because the life of the child is in danger, then besides making up for the fast later on, she also has to give fidya, she has to feed one poor person. But the more authentic ruling is the second ruling that if a breastfeeding woman or a pregnant woman, if she misses any fast or she breaks any fast, only thing she has to do is make up for the fast later on. This is more correct view as compared to all the views available. Which is also followed by Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, when Abu Dawud, may Allah have mercy on them, asked Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal that what should a breastfeeding woman do or a pregnant woman do if she misses the fast? So he replied that she need not feed anyone, but she has to make up for the fast later on from the other days. Okay, thank you. Dr. Zakia, 
The last question today is, is it permissible to give the fidia to one's own children and grandchildren as an iftar meal? As far as fidya is concerned, it's mentioned in the Quran, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 184, that if a person can do with hardship, he should feed one indigent person, one poor person for every fast he has missed. But as far as given to the grandchildren is concerned, it's mentioned here in the Quran that fidya should be given to a poor person. So if the grandchildren aren't poor or the children aren't poor, you can't give fidya to them. They should be poor. If they're rich, then you cannot give. Point number two, fidya is somewhat like zakat. Zakat you can't give to a person who's dependent. So the children are dependent to the father. Even the grandchildren are dependent. So but natural in this context, fidya cannot be given to the children and the grandchildren. And the third point to be noted is that if the person is very poor and the children are not dependent on the father or the grandfather, because he's so poor, he doesn't have money to look after them. Only in that case, as a last resort, he can give fidya to the grandchildren or children based on the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, book of fasting, hadith number 1936. When a person comes to the Prophet, he gives the basket of date to him and says that feed it to the poor people. So he says that, should I give it to someone who's poorer than me and my family? Prophet says yes. So he says, by Allah, I do not know of anyone, any family who's poorer than my family between the two mountains of Medina. So the Prophet smiles where Mullah can be seen and he says, okay, feed your family. So in this case, where the family is very poor and they are dependent on the father or the grandfather, in this case, as a last resort, it can be given as, as fidya to the children and grandchildren. As far as saying it's a iftar party, that's not a problem at all. But the general ruling is, it cannot be given to the rich people. As a last resort, if they're really poor, then it can be given. Okay, well, Dr. Zakir, thank you very much for your very nice answers today, alhamdulillah, on the topic of the Qadda fasts, Fidia, and uh, Kafara fasts. I mean, there's a lot of information that you've given in this episode, some of it quite technical, and I hope that um, the audience or the viewers followed it better than I did. Alhamdulillah, there was a lot of information, and I'm sure there's great benefit in your answers. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir Naik. Brothers and sisters, once again, we've come to the end of today's show, and I trust that you have benefited enormously from the information that we've discussed on the topic. Tomorrow, brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll be discussing the sighting of the moon. Do join us then. At the same time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. وبركاته حافظين ذاكرين قانتين خاشعين ذاكرين خاشعين مسلمين مؤمنين للاله عابدين شهونا صبر وعتق وقنوت فيه صدق يومنا صبر ورزق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأطل مسعدا أهلا وخلا لتوفي